Our next batch of Awakenings along with the new raid is here. Uh, raise your hand if you got, forgot most of these characters were in this game. <laughs> the Awakening batch brought the Awakenings for Satmore, Papa Nemo, Sid, Quistus, Kane. And I feel like there's someone else, and I, I always for, I always forget the last person. But upon this uh, awakening bench, uh, Saymore and Papalimo did get reworks along with Papalimo's EX debut and his uh, EX plus. Uh, so what they what these two characters did get were rightfully powerful, and let's talk about them just a bit. Uh, just kind of go over them. We'll make it quick. Uh, Saymore did get a pretty good buff. Uh, he now. His chain spell now executes twice regardless, and if the opponent is below 80% HP, he'll, he'll do it. I'll do it. He'll do it again. Uh, his second skill pretty much just got the same uh, same treatment, uh, you know, besides the executing twice, but if they're below 80% HP, he'll do it again, but he'll just shoot off chain spell. Uh, so he won't do it again. He'll just use his first skill, uh, and he'll still get the buffs and debuffs that are applied uh, from chain spell being activated and whatnot. Uh, his EX is, you know, still the same. Uh, his EX Plus just offers him uh, a little more hits, uh, more potency increases. The overflow increases actually don't change because, as we remember from before, St. Moore's EX actually grants him more overflow depending on how much of that stack that he has upon using his EX. And it was kind of booty because, like, you had to use the EX three times to get it out to max 200% overflow. Uh, which you'll never do because it is a slow charging EX. Thanks to his EX plus, he starts out the quest with two stacks of this uh, frame buff. So the EX will essentially be at max potential as soon as you use it once, uh, which is pretty nice. I like that a lot. It helps him out a lot. And uh, at three out of three, if the enemy is below 70% HP, he will trigger Lance of Atrophy, uh, which is a second skill. And if they're 30% or lower, he will trigger uh, Chain Spell after using his EX, which is pretty nice. Um, with all that said, uh, Saymore becomes a pretty powerful magic uh, DPS unit with, some, uh, with the, the debuffs that he had just pretty much just better because he has more opportunities to continue to inflict them. The problem is with Say, uh, Saymore, though, however, is uh, uh, that's all he's got. Um, and not going to lie, we already have characters who can pretty much just do his job better already. And... It's not too much of a con, at least for his first, first and second skill, uh, the fact that uh, he does have to rely on his opponent being at a specific HP before he can start uh, triggering these double hits. It's kind of, uh, it's okay for his first and second skill because the requirement's only 80%, but his EX requires them to be at 70% or lower, which kind of sucks. It, that does kind of suck, I'm not going to lie. Uh, because that, that means for the first part of the fight, you know, he's just going to be using just his regular old EX, which is good, but I mean, like, it could just be better, and, you know, you have to wait until he gets, they get to certain amounts of HP to see Seymour at pretty much his max potential, which is 30%, because let's be real, Chain Spell is the better of the two to be using anyway. With all that said, is Seymour important for the, uh, the Chaos Era? No, unfortunately, he's not. Um, even with this rightfully powerful rework, uh, Saymore's spotlight is is not even there. Uh, he's easily forgettable, and he's not going to be remembered anytime soon. And I I do appreciate the rework, and I do appreciate uh, the EX Plus, though I do hate his character. I do think it was rightfully powerful, but I just don't think it was good enough. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I don't think it was good enough to pretty much put him in any form of a spotlight to give him any uh, any chance of a time to shine. So, if Seymour is a favorite of yours and you do end up still trying to build him up, you definitely want a 3 out of 3 him. You want to capitalize on the max amount of damage that he can do because he doesn't get the uh, executing skills from his EX until 3 out of 3. And then the, the potency increases, the stat increases, everything else, that all the goodies that come along with it are still nice to have on a character like Saymore because even though he is a debuffer, his main role is DPS, and you want to make sure he is hitting as hard as possible. Now, let's move on to the short stuff himself. Uh, Papa Limo. Papa Limo did get... It's not... It wasn't really too much of a rework from what I remember it was beforehand. 
Uh, his fire stance pretty much just gains splash damage and more potency. Um, it, and, and, and the fire impeller apparel. And, which inflicts on all enemies. And his second skill, uh, not his second, well, yeah, his second skill, uh, which will put him in his ice stance, uh, inflicts the ice imperil, which is only on one target, unfortunately. Um, I thought that was a pretty big miss, um, but I understand the way his, uh, his kit is given. Now, his EX is actually kind of like Onion Knights, where his, depending on the stance that he's in, he'll actually have a different EX. If you're in his fire stance, uh, it is an AOE attack that's just, that just hits hard as hell and does a heavy amount of uh, overflow and split damage. Um, his ice stance allows him to gain some brave gains and uh, gain brave based off of the damage dealt and only affects a single target, which is you know pretty cool. You know, and uh, allows you to switch up what you need to use at a, at a given time. Now, I, correct me if I am wrong. I'm pretty sure, sure I remember seeing it like this. Uh, his EX Plus allows the fire stance to do shared damage. I could be wrong. I, I, I believe I saw shared damage, but I think it could be split damage. I know there wasn't an, uh, an increase there, but I'm pretty sure he gains access to shared damage in his fire stance. Uh, more potency increases and things like that. Ooh, excuse me. Uh, and yeah, pretty good stuff coming out of his EX Plus uh, and coming out from his base kit. Uh, but is Papalimo important? Papalimo comes back to us as a very powerful ice and fire uh, fire user. Uh, having the apparel in both sides is pretty nice to have. It is unfortunate the ice apparel is only afflicted to one enemy, but you can make do uh, make do with that. Just make sure you're just a little careful. You're not being all spammy, spammy with the thing. However, much like uh, Seymour, we do have characters who could do Pop Lemo's job better. And it's not to say that Pop Lemo is in the same category as Seymour, because Pop Lemo is actually very powerful. Uh, he does a lot of damage, and a lot of good damage. Uh, but in the end, he's a selfish DPS unit, and the only thing he's got going for the team is the fire and ice and peril, which is nice, you know, Characters who utilize the fire and ice element can take advantage of that, or if you bring the infrared Shiva summon, but that's only for six turns, and we don't have that many characters amongst those elements to take advantage of that in the first place. At least not right now. So, um, solely because of that, unfortunately, I'm going to have to say Apomolimo is not important to the Chaos Era either. Uh, his EX Plus, everything that he got is very very powerful, and I'm very impressed with everything that Papalimo has, so don't get me wrong when I say that uh, say that he's not important, I do think Papalimo is very powerful, but he's just he's just a diamond doesn't match a DPS unit, uh, the only thing he's got going for the team part, uh, team wise is the apparels, everything else is pretty selfish, so you know, you're pretty much just kind of in a situation where uh, you know, we have other characters who could do a job better, who have better roles, you know, he's competing with some heavy, uh, heavy magic DPS characters, uh, but still with the likes of Emperor and, um, Ultimecia being very high up on that list, so he's got some civ competition, and unfortunately he's not breaking through it anytime soon, mm. it is a pass for him, if you do choose to build him up, um, definitely three out of three him, to capitalize on the damage, uh, because his three out of three is pretty stacked, and uh, and you'll help him out, do what he's supposed to do. So I do apologize if either of these characters are a favorite of yours, uh, but me personally, I would definitely have to say that this banner is a pretty safe pass. Uh, I honestly wouldn't even recommend tossing anything at it, personally. Again, if they are favorites of yours, please by, by all means pull into this banner. You want to play to your favorites, you know, the, the usual. But... If you're if you're looking for straight DPS units, if you're looking for magic DPS unit, units, this banner isn't it. Uh, if you are a new player, these characters can help you out, uh, but will be outshined relatively soon. And we have a much better cast of magic DPS units coming out relatively soon, a a including one who should be here very soon. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, this banner is a very safe pass. I will say though, however, if you are missing Quistus's EX. 
uh, and you want to toss some tickets at the other banner, uh, I did that as well. I tossed a few tickets. Unfortunately, I didn't get my, I didn't get it. But if you are missing that Quistus EX, now is the time, guys. Get in there. Go grab that Quistus EX if you can. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't go too heavy into the banner, though. However, just give it a shot because she will return in the future with her own EX Plus. But this could be a good time just to pick it up now. Um, alongside of Sid's EX if you don't have that because it gets pretty powerful in the future as well. But that'll pretty much wrap it up for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching, uh, and I'll see you in the next one.